That's Craig, WJ6F. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to put together the Cushcraft HV4E vertical antenna, and we'll get to it right after this. As you'll see, this antenna is actually pretty easy to put together. You don't need an engineering degree to do it, which is a good thing for me. Now they say that this antenna can be one mounted permanently in your yard, or it can also be used portable. If you're gonna use a portable, they suggest you get their MFJ1901. At the time of filming this video, this antenna is going for $219.95. It works on 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters and has enhanced 40 meter performance. They're saying that it can handle 1200 watts on sideband, 500 watts CW, and 500 watts on digital on 40 meters. They'll say high Q top loading resonators delivers less loss, higher gain on 15, 20, and 10 meters. And then for 40 meters has center loading, which improves efficiency and lower center of gravity, making it easier to handle and increase strong wind survivability. Saying it weighs five pounds and is 19 feet tall. And then it has a very small footprint, low center of gravity and lightweight which lets you install it by yourself and you can move it pretty much anywhere. They also give you a comparison chart here between the HV4E and the Hustler 4 BTV. If you can't find your instruction manual, they do have one here that you can download. Okay, the tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need a 5 16 nut driver, 7 16 open end wrench. If you don't have one, you can use a domestic metric bolt rounder, also known as a crescent wrench large wire cutters, this would be for cutting the aluminum spokes, small pair of pliers, number two Phillips screwdriver, also suitable eye protection, and you're gonna need a tape measure because part of the mast you have to measure out. Okay, the items that you get in this package, you get the six mast poles, three are gonna be for the bottom, three are gonna be for the top. You have your loading coil assembly, and you get 12 different radials, you have four 8 inch, four 10 inch, and four 14 inch. I give you a slew of hose clamps and the base assembly. I already have the U bolts installed, they won't come like this. And you'll get two packages of hardware. You also get a 16 inch fiberglass tube, and this is for your base section. This will go in these U bolts. The loading coil assembly is also made of fiberglass. Okay, let's start putting this thing together. First thing you want to do is get your base assembly and put it together. What they want you to do, you can put the on the U-bolts, put on the flat washer first, then the locking washer, then your nut. And you'll do this four separate times. Just make sure you have them going through the right holes. Once that's done, you'll take your fiberglass pipe and run it through the U-bolts. And then tighten the U-bolts down. You gotta watch out for this. They have a, for your SO239, you gotta make sure that this wire does not get caught behind the washers. Once you have that done, go ahead and set it aside and we're gonna do the lower half of the mast. Now you're gonna fit these three tubes together and you'll be using the one and a quarter inch hose clamps. And once you've got it all put together and before you tighten down the hose clamps, you wanna make sure that it's 94 inches long. And throw a hose clamp on there. Gonna snug it a little. And then for the third. Alrighty, now let's break out the tape measure. We're gonna measure this and make sure that we're at 94 inches before we completely tighten it down. Okay, now we're gonna measure this, make sure that we're at 94 inches long. And we're a little long by about two and a half inches. And let's measure it again. And you'll keep doing this until you get to 94 inches. Yep, we're at 90, well, actually we're about a quarter of an inch short. And of course, once you have it measured out properly, go ahead and tighten everything up. And we're right at 94 inches. OK, 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this the lower mast assembly to the loading coil assembly. And one of the things you want to make sure you do is make sure that this soldered eyelet right here is in between this bracket and the tube once the tube comes up out and over it. And you'll just take this screw out and then match all the holes. There's already pre-drilled holes in the tubing. Okay, here you can see the pre-drilled hole through there. And as mentioned before, make sure this soldered lug right here is in between the tubing and this bracket. And then line up your hole. It looks like we got that side. And it's going to require some uh, moving around. There you go. And this already has a star washer on it, so you don't have to worry about finding one. And there you go. It's all hooked up. And you can see we've got this solder lug in between the tubing and the bracket. Okay, now we're going to do the upper mast assembly. And one of the things you'll notice on these pipes, on the largest one, you have a screw hole, but no slot. And on the other end is slotted with no screw hole. The second largest one is slotted on one end. However, there is no slot nor screw hole on the other end. And the smallest has neither a slot nor a screw hole on either end. So per the directions, what you're gonna do, and these are C, D, and E. The directions say to take section D, non-slotted end, down here. Then you're gonna take the C slotted end, go about two inches and then clamp it down with the 0.875 inch hose clamp. Then the next one, you're gonna grab E, which is the smallest pipe, and you're gonna slide into it into section D slotted end. And again, you're gonna go in about two inches. The final length will be adjusted when you tune the antenna. Okay, the items you're gonna to need to attach the upper mast to the assembly. You're gonna need a one and a quarter inch hose clamp. You're gonna need a six to 32 by one and a half stainless steel screw, a number six lock washer, and a six to 34 cap nut. That's the one that already has the built-in lock washer on it. You're gonna slide the mast here inside the assembly. Make sure you line up the screw holes. Don't forget to put your hose clamp on. Put the two pieces together. And you go through the mast and the assembly. Yep, before you do that, move your hose clamp up, slide your screw in, and put the nut on. Then tighten the hose clamp. And that's all there is to it. Now you've got the whole mast assembled. Now we're gonna put the radials in. Okay, per the manual, each radial spoke level requires eight 6 to 32 by 0.375 stainless steel screws, eight 6 to 32 kept nuts for a total of 24 of each. For initial assembly, the R1 and R2 radial spokes are 14 inches long, and the R3 radial spokes are 18 inches long. Well, mine are not. Mine are what they said earlier. They will be trimmed to the correct length in the tuning phase of the assembly, and we're going to do that in another video. And the way we're going to do this, starting at the top, this is 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. And then the upper mast makes up the 40 meters. So you're going to start with R3, the 14 inch radial on top. Then you're going to do the R2, which is the 10 inch radial in the middle. And for 10 meters, the R1, which is the eight inch radial. Go ahead and get those put in. Now don't tighten everything completely until after you've got everything in. Okay, once you've got all of them hooked up, Go ahead and snug them down. You don't want to crank it down and 
because you're going to be checking them later on and trimming them as you tune the antenna. Okay, once you get the whole mast put together, you're going to attach it to the base unit. The way you're going to do that, you can take the bottom, you're going to slide it over this fiberglass. Make sure you put your one and a quarter hose mount on it, or hose clamp. And then on the back side, you're going to take this wire coming out of your SO239, and you're going to bend that and stick it up underneath this hose clamp and then tighten it down. Okay, once you've got everything set up and it's all put together and you want to do base mounting, what the owner's manual says is the base mount is designed to clamp to a pipe of one to one and a half outside diameter. A galvanized water pipe, one inch nominal, OD of 1.335 inches, is ideal for mounting the antenna base. The exact way of mounting the pipe is up to you, but it is suggested that a four foot piece of one inch galvanized pipe be driven two to three feet deep vertically into the ground. It also says with regards to RF grounding, the antenna requires multiple ground radials to properly operate. The single ground rod or the ground mounting pipe is not adequate and the antenna will not tune up. The MFJ 1932 or GKR 6160 ground radio kits will work adequately with the antenna. Attach one end of the ground radials to the base plate ground holes using 6 to 32 or 8 to 32 screws and nuts. Spread the radials out just under the ground all in all, this was a simple antenna to build. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not bad. And if you have the slightest bit of mechanical aptitude, it won't be a problem. There will be a video in the future here about how to use the antenna and how well it works. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there is a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these other videos? And thanks again for watching.